The creatures of Ark Genesis Part 2. There's a few of them, all with their own unique abilities and new ways to tame them. And I've got the full guide here on how to do it. You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and this is indeed a full taming guide with timestamps so you can go to the creature that you want to tame. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So the Noglin, the brain slug, the mind controlling pest, is situated within Rockwell's innards, simply found by journeying to Rockwell's garden and entering the trench from the middle of the map, at which point you will be greeted by the hardest biome on the map, Rockwell's innards, a trial and test of your might. However, this is where the Puglin spawns, and if you want one early on in the game, you're going to have to have a bit of luck and hope that one spawns near the entrance. Now, the Puglin, when engaged, will be alerted by you and attempt to run away. So the best way to coax it outside of Rockwell's innards into a nice, safe, taming environment is by using honey that you can find dotted throughout the map through beehives. Once coaxed, like E.T., into a safe place, you want to ensure you've got an army of disposable creatures. In my case, I'm using turtles as they're quite tanky and certainly don't use a giga or you might have a bit of an issue and all you need to do is keep your distance and allow it to mind control every creature there of course the higher the level nuggling the more times you're going to need to allow it to mind control i'm using turtles because they're quite tanky and can take a hit when possessed and once enough turtles have been mind controlled you've got your very own nuggling the Shadow Mane, arguably the most wanted creature in Arc Genesis Part 2. But before you go ahead and find one, you're going to need to go and get a lot of fish using fish baskets. And you're going to need a lot depending on the level of the Shadow Mane you tame. And the weight of the fish needs to be over 0.5. Once you've amassed enough fish, head over to Rockwell's garden and they spawn pretty much all over this biome. However, I find loads plenty around the safe of the map and you certainly don't want to tame them at night. Wait until 5.30 in the morning, of course, in in-game time, at which point they will fall asleep. Then simply go up to the one that you want to tame with, of course, the fish baskets in the last slot of your hot bar and then simply passive tame it. Upon doing so, it will turn invisible, but don't panic. You can simply track it with the in-game tracker. And then all you have to do is wait for it to lie down and go to sleep again before feeding it another fish basket. And that's it. Once you've fed them enough, you've owned your very own Shadow Mane. The Astro Delph is the new flyer dogfighter in town. It's a pretty simple tame, found in the space biome. All you need to do is pet it and then feed the element, of course that being in the last slot of your hot bar. Elements can be found and harvested in the space biome, but it depends on which space biome you're in. At the stroke of midnight every night, the spaceship that you're in will go into warp speed and go to a different location, at which point the biome will completely transform, offering you new resources for you to harvest, and one of these will involve elements. And once you've got your element, simply pet and chase the Astrodelphus all around the space biome until it's yours. The longer the timing process goes on, the more elements it requires, so get spamming that button and make sure you don't get underneath it as it will somehow hurt itself and lose that effectiveness. But once done, you've bagged yourself an Astrodelphus. The Void Wirum, aka Tech Wyvern, can be found in the same space biome. If you don't know how to get there, it's simply via tunnels between the Eden Zone and Rockwell's Garden. The Void Wirum requires mutagen to tame. And currently, as far as we know, there's two ways to gain mutagen. One is simply by picking it up in Rockwell's innards. However, when you pick that up, you are unleashing chaos. So be prepared if you are going to go down there to farm it. The second grindier but much easier method is by going to the space biome and awaiting for the right biome to appear. If you skip to this part, I explained it in the Astrodelphi section. And all you need to do is wait until the yellow hueish asteroid rocks appear, easily known by the giant Jupiter looking planet that you can see from anywhere in the spaceship. And on them, you will find many dirty orange rocks, all filled with a resource called Mutagel that you can harvest with pick or mining drill. And you will need a lot. It costs 800 Mutagel to convert into six mutagen whereby you can do that in a chemistry bench and you'll certainly need a good stack of mutagen upon encountering your void worm of choice you've now got to reduce its health to the bare minimum i've found a lot of weapons don't work however a tech rifle is perfect for this and simply shoot it until it makes the following animation whereby it will have blue streaky lines emanating around it as well indicating it's ready to tame at which point you're going to enter a taming minigame similar to the equus whereby you need to mount it and feed it mutagen every time it does a barrel roll it's certainly one of the more difficult ones but if you get that timing right you should have it tamed in no time and have a brand new tech 
Void Wirum Wyvern. The Maywing, the flying nurse nipple attacking squirrel. The Maywing can be found all over the Eden Zone, it's very hard to miss. The easiest tame of them all because it's tamed via the conventional methods of being knocked out. However, it will fly away when engaged, so you need to ensure you trap it. Bear traps do work, however, a net projectile is perfect to take in this one down and simply knock it out with trank arrows or darts and feed it its preferred food superior kibble. And there you go, flying baby stealing is yours for the taking. Now the last on this list, the at at tech giraffe multifunctional tool that you're going to want to have, the strider, is tamed very differently to every other creature on this list. To even engage with one, you've got to complete a certain amount of missions depending on the level of strider that you want to tame. Lucky for you, if it's a low level strider you want to tame, then you can go and do the race missions. They are by far the easiest missions to do on the map and certainly pretty fun to do. Once you've got all the missions completed that you need for the level strider that you're about to tame, you're going to need mutagel. If you skip to this section, I did a guide within the Void Wirren part, go check that out. Make sure you have it in the last slot in your hotbar, at which point you'll be required to interact with a certain part of the strider and entering a mini game. And it's a pretty straightforward mini game, lining up the symbols to the sound of the beat. It's much easier to do this if you've got the music on and simply hit the trigger button at the right time. Upon doing that three times, you will give it some efficiency and then you'll have to wait a small amount of time to repeat the process again. And once done and you've got your timing efficiency all the way up, congratulations, you now own the best multi-tool in ARC. I hope you enjoyed this. What did you think? Comment below, let me know. Sorry it took so long to do this, but I wanted to make sure I had all the facts correct. And there's certainly more guides to come. Watch this space. My name's Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always,